Hi there again everyone, Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks, the RC sub guy, and I wanted to give you an update on this monstrous 1 30th scale German Type 21 submarine. Uh, had some progress on it, not a ton of it, but as you can see it's starting to look a little bit more like a boat and a little bit less like a collection of fiberglass parts. So I want to show you where I'm at, what we're doing, what stage we're at, and uh, let you know what the next steps are. Let's go take a look. So basically yesterday I spent uh, a couple of hours outside doing a lot of sanding. There was Bondo, uh, or filler, it's not Bondo, all over the hull. Um, I sanded it all down, got everything nice and smooth. Now this is a first pass and what uh, the primer has done uh, is it has showed everything that I thought I was doing amazingly well. Uh, but uh, still need to allocate more time to. And that's this is going to be like a three or four stage uh, process of filling, sanding, priming, filling, sanding, priming, over and over and over again. Um, but you can see things are certainly a lot better uh, than they were. Just a few areas where I need to do a little bit of addressing there. A lot of pinholes uh, in the hull. That'll get addressed with a little bit of glazing putty and those will get cleaned right up. Um, overall, the seam has actually turned out really, really well. It looks a little rough right now, but I'm just going to run the sander over that and make that a nice, perfectly straight line um, so that you can see that going on. I wanted to show you this as well. These are 3D printed um, templates that I made for these front dive uh, holes, or the, uh, the scupper holes there, drain holes. Um, and the reason that I did that is because these uh, were not very well cut initially when I got the boat. So um, I wanted to use the 3D printer to get a machine accurate version. And what I did is uh, 3D printed these in plastic. Uh, it's about a millimeter thick, uh, maybe 1.5 millimeters thick. So I couldn't just slap it on the outside of the hull. I needed to recess that. So I routed uh, that down and this is just going to slip right in there, perfectly flush with the hull. Um, I'll put some filler in around the outside, sand it down, and you, in theory, won't even be able to tell that it was an insert. So let's uh, open this up. I want to show you the inside of this because I don't think I did very much of that and uh, give you uh, some thoughts about how I'm going to be arranging the interior drive components. The conning tower itself uh, is going to be completely removable. Um, it has three bolts that you can see on the bottom there that are going to secure it to the upper deck. Uh, now the upper deck for the most part is a, a thin laser cut plastic. Um, so I didn't want to bolt to that, but I do have, and I think you can see it here, uh, fiberglass cross members that I left in place before I put the deck on. So that is solid um, in that spot, that spot, and this one. That's where the conning tower secures to the hull. Um, and what I did for access, three bolts. Uh, and these are basically thumb screws. They are stainless steel. Um, you don't need any tools to get into this boat. So if you bear with me one second, I'll remove these and remove the rear section. I'll show you what that is starting to look like and then how the rest of the upper deck removes. Um, basically, this section here just slides aft and lifts up. And that's it. Uh, in the back, you've got uh, like a little brass U-channel that fits over a stainless steel bolt back here and uh, with it securing in the front everything gets locked down nice and easy. Um, taking a look on the inside here you can see the uh, rudder assembly. It's pretty slick actually. It's a, a belted assembly. It's very very smooth in operation. We've got our shafts uh, going on on the inside there. This boat was originally designed as a dry hull and so we've got bulkheads uh, in here. The thing about that is, uh, for a boat of this size to make it a dry hull boat, um, it would probably end up weighing like 300 pounds or something crazy like that by the time you ballasted it down. 
Um, not something that you want to be hauling around to the pond. So really the only option uh, is a cylinder, which is what we're going to do. Um, center section of the hull has these lips in here. So the rear section pins down the center section. Front section, again, one single stainless set or, uh, hold down screw, thumb screw. these in a little bit here and again this just slides forward and up there's my retracting dive plane assembly and um, again the brass hook uh, on the front there these are going to be our opening and closing torpedo doors and a little peek inside again more dry hull sections. Uh, let's lift off the center section. So again, without it being pinned down, we now have access to the center of the boat. Um, inside there, you can see I've marked out where the periscope assembly goes all the way down to the bottom of the hull when it's fully retracted. Um, so this is all open right now. It's about eight and a half inches wide. Uh, the boat itself uh, is darn near nine feet long. Now, I told you I wanted to go into a little bit about how I wanted or how I'm envisioning the uh, drive system, the, the operational components of this boat to look. And I think what I'm gonna end up doing is two basically uh, complete dive systems, a motor section, a ballast tank, another ballast tank, and then a pump section. Uh, and then we'll probably end up running a big sealed lead acid battery, um, free flooding in the hull there. I've weighed all of these upper components, uh, anything above the water line, and it, it works out to almost exactly four kilograms, uh, 3,900 grams. Um, and the reason that I'm in metric for all of you people who are still stuck in the Stone Age and prefer to use the Imperial system is that it makes calculations exceptionally easy. Um, at 3.9 kilograms, I need exactly 3.9 liters of water. So, hey, that was easy. Um, and that means calculating ballast volume uh, is exceptionally easy as well. Um, basically works out to two 11 inch tanks. Uh, and that'll give me uh, about 10% of extra wiggle room uh, so that uh, we can have uh, additional components on the top if we need to, and of course, full static diving. So, that is the boat. As she sits today, like I said, in Great Primer, it's starting to look like a boat right now. I have some more sanding to do, some more filling to do, some more sanding to do, some more filling to do, and probably some more sanding to do. Then I will be marking out all of the weld lines that you can see on those blueprints up there and adding some styrene strip to the outside of the boat to represent those weld lines. And if I do it properly, um, I'll be able to helpfully conceal some of these seams as well, but you can see that's just a, a knife edge of a seam between the forward section and the center section there, for example. So that's where we're at. I uh, hope you enjoy this. It's going to be looking more and more like a boat in the coming weeks. I hope you will continue to check in and see how it turns out. Again, my name is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to check out my website, nautilusdrydocks.com, for this, many other projects, lots of information, resources, and RC submarine kits and components for you to play with. Thanks for joining me. Catch you next time.